can see here how I've, I've got a lighter color, darker, lighter, separated by the edges, which are the slip edges. Uh, that's sprayed with, uh, with layers of glaze that are just um, darker and lighter so that I can accentuate those, those, uh, those different strata. But then the edge of the slip is highlighted with a shiny glaze that actually looks like it's maybe in the process of, of melting, like it's liquid. And so um, that's just a, kind of what's in my head when I'm, when I'm uh, applying slip like that and thinking about the ways that I might eventually glaze that pot. Anytime I'm glazing a larger pot, one of the concerns is spending the glaze spending too much time in the in the pot. Uh, I think it's important to be fairly efficient as I'm putting the glaze in and pouring it out uh, so I don't end up with too thick of an application. Okay, watercolor green is a, is a really fluid glaze and it's apt to run. But in the middle of a bowl, it's not going to run anywhere. Uh, it's going to pool. And so I'm a little more generous with the application of watercolor green in here. And I, I kind of try to take advantage of the fact that it can really look like a pool of water. inspired by lots of things. Certainly the history of ceramics and contemporary pottery. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to see the classical influences on a form like this. I'm also inspired by nature. I love going to swamps. I love um, the desert. I love seeing rocks exposed in road cuts. Tidal pools are one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And when I see the way that my bowl relates to, to the moss and the lichens growing on this tree, I find that incredibly inspiring. My goal is to make surfaces that look like they grew rather than surfaces that look like I applied them. This is an example of a gravity gun. Gravity guns have the glaze container located over the gun itself so that uh, the glaze moves through the gun by the action of gravity and all the compressor actually has to do is atomize the liquid. <laughs> 